uh, good morning. Uh, so today I'd like to tell you about a new paradigm of uh, electronics. And hopefully uh, this will, right now is still in the toy stage, but we hope that this will allow us to uh, bring new possibilities uh, for medical care. So we are becoming increasingly more dependent on our cell phones and uh, electronics. Uh, but the question I want to ask you is, 15 years from now, do you think we're still going to be holding a cell phone in our hand? What will be electronics like in 15 years? So our bold claim uh, we put out two years ago is that by then, we're going to go beyond smartphones. We're going to enter a different era of electronics. So all the functions of our cell phone, smartphone, is going to be dissolved into the clothes we wear, the electronics we attach to our body, and electronics we implant inside our body. So this might become how we connect to our friends, the external world, to the environment. And today's electronics are rigid and brittle. But if we can invent or develop new electronics that are compatible to our body, to um, our tissue or organ, we can imagine these electronics going to be able to accommodate the movement of human body. Uh, they are going to produce displays and electronics that are bendable and foldable. In fact, we're already starting to see that in the newest uh, mobile phone, it's already a foldable version that's on the market. And going towards even further future, we envision electronics that we can place inside the body. We can place them onto beating heart and place them onto the brain, directly onto the brain or inside the brain. But one requirement that's critical to these electronics is that they need to be able to integrate with human seamlessly so that we don't feel them when we wear them or when they are inside us. And they cannot restrain the movement and they have to be able to collect important information that we really care about. So the way we see that how we develop these electronics or the inspirations we use to come up with these electronics is to use human skin as our model system. We make an analogy of what the functions of human skin and our wearables, or what we want to have in our future wearables. Our skin can collect information, sense information in the surroundings. Our skin can process information into the signal that our brain can understand. And it can also allow us to communicate uh, with our surroundings. So that's exactly what we want our wearables to have. And on top of that, we want the uh, wearables to be compatible with human body. And our skin has the properties of being flexible, being stretchable, and they can self-heal if wounded, and they're also biodegradable. And these are all the attributes we want to incorporate into our wearables. So the most challenging task for us to realize that is the lack of electronic materials. So that's the uh, fundamental research we have been carrying out in my research group. That is to develop all the different pieces of electronic materials from molecular level so that we can have conductors, semiconductors, dielectric materials, substrates. And all these are the basic components that we need to build electronics, to build circuits, to build sensors, to build displays. And 
in addition to having the basic electronic properties that need to be comparable to what we can achieve with current electronics, we try to incorporate new properties such as stretchability, uh, self-healing property, and the biodegradability. So now, over the last 10 years, we have developed a number of these materials. So now we can start to use these materials to build electronics. And the other challenge was to actually make them uh, into devices. So first, these are examples of materials that we currently have. For example, they can be highly stretchable and conductive at the same time. Uh, they can self-heal. So an example in the video you see is the material uh, being damaged by cutting, simple cutting, and putting the two pieces together. And the chemistry is taking place in real time, uh, and the chemical bonds are being formed at the interface uh, to allow the material to repair themselves. So once we have these materials, then the other challenge we face is to take the materials and incorporate them into the electronics so that we can start to build electronics that can sense and can measure things. Uh, this is um, a, uh, what we call artificial skin or electronic skin that has 100 sensors incorporated into this skin. So this skin is able to measure the location of an object uh, or detect the, um, uh, the position of where this object is placed. And you can see they start to take the form factor of um, human skin. And then once we learn how to build these devices, we start to see what are the applications we can employ these new type of materials and devices. So the first type of uh, sensing that we try to learn is to try to mimic the sense of touch of human skin. So that includes pressure sensing, sensing of strain, and sensing of um, uh, shear forces. And with these uh, sensors, then we can uh, start thinking about what are places we can apply them. So this is an example we're exploring. This is a, a spin-off company trying to commercialize a non-invasive continuous blood pressure monitoring device. Uh, so here, this prototype shows um, we mount the sensor onto the wrist, which will capture the arterial pulse wave, uh, as shown here. Here, there are four sensors, so four uh, pulse waves. And these pulse waves um, can be used to not only extract information of blood pressure, uh, but also uh, will provide us information of arterial stiffness and potentially the condition of heart. Uh, we also start to place these sensors onto robots, onto the hands of robot. Uh, here, you're looking at the um, uh, robot hand uh, being able to um, handle very delicate object and also being able to pick and place object. Uh, it's still pre very pre uh, primitive, uh, but we imagine that when we are able to integrate more sensors uh, and being able to collect the data and actually process the data in more um, with more capability, then uh, imagine using wearing these gloves. Uh, for doctors uh, to perform examination. Uh, so quantitative information uh, based on touch or palpation will be gathered using these kinds of hands uh, instead of uh, qualitative information by just simple uh, feeling of the doctors. We gather together a group of um, uh, collaborators uh, within Stanford. Uh, this is a project uh, that's uh, being sponsored by the Stanford Catalyst Program. Uh, we're working with uh, Lee Williams uh, from psychiatry, uh, Pablo uh, Paradis uh, from computer science, uh, Jean Lippert from bioengineering, and Keith uh, Humphrey uh, from psychiatry. Our goal here is to start to take the skin 
machine like electronics to integrate them into wearables so that we can start to measure features uh, such as heart rate wearabilities, skin conductance, as well as chemical information such as cortisol information from sweat. So these combined information, we hope to be able to use them uh, to inform the psychiatrists of a potential uh, detection of the early onset of depression and the develop intervention methods to prevent the, um, uh, the disease. In addition to the um, uh, wearables uh, outside our body, we start to develop wearables that can also go inside the body. Um, here, the um, uh, electronics are placing onto the beating heart. Uh, we are collecting electrical signal uh, for the a uh, potentially predicting AFib uh, in, um, uh, in the animal. And the second uh, picture here shows uh, implanted soft electrodes uh, that can not only measure electrical signal from the brain, uh, but also chemical signals such as dopamine and serotonin, so that we can start to have feed lab, uh, feed um, uh, closed loop uh, feedback using these uh, stimulation as well as uh, sensing. Additional um, further research we're carrying out includes um, uh, trying to incorporate the growing tissue directly onto our electronics so that we can start to measure the uh, process of how these tissue are developing over time. Uh, so here the green um, lumps you're seeing are the um, uh, organoids, brain organoids that have been uh, growing onto our electronics that we are starting to measure electrical signal from these uh, growing organoids. So with all of these, uh, it's not possible to um, explore all the possibilities uh, of um, uh, the uh, power of wearables uh, in the near future with just one research group. Uh, so uh, in 2016, I started a new initiative in Stanford. It's called the Stanford Wearable Electronics Initiative. And the goal is to have um, researchers from campus, from different parts, parts of campus to working together so that we can really take the um, electronics combined with data, combining uh, with um, uh, medical applications uh, to really make an impact. Uh, so here, um, I hope to be able to have more collaborators uh, from campus and from uh, around the world to join us to work together and join our collaboration. Thank you.